Good morning. So last week I was talking about the end of the world and a huge number coming through a great tribulation or great trials. How do we survive great trials? Well, only with faith. And how do we gain faith? Well, I'd like to look at one situation because there are many situations which will test our faith. But just as an example, I'd like to think that you're indoors in the, at the end of the world and you look in the cupboard and there's no food. What do we do about that? Well, I'd like you to go back three and a half thousand years approximately and you're living in northern Egypt in the Nile Delta and it's a nice place to live. It's warm if not hot. The Nile floods every so often and it brings down with it this silt which is very fertile so you grow all sorts of crops, melons, hang on, I've got a list here, leeks, onions, garlic, and so on. You have fish from the river, you have plenty of bread, you have meat from the flocks and milk. But your life is unbearable. You get up before it's dark, you, your family, your young children, you go out looking for straw, you collect it, then you have to mix it with clay and mud and whatever backbreaking work, you put it into forms, you then empty it into rows and put it in the sun. The sun bakes the bricks but it also bakes you. Your life is unbearable. At the end of the day you're exhausted. And don't forget there's no Sabbath, there's no Saturday off, seven days a week. So you start praying to this God that you've heard of, Abraham's God, and you ask for help. And the Lord sends Moses. Now Moses performs a lot of miracles, well obviously from God. And so you start to get to know this God, that he can do anything. And as the tenth plague comes along, you're set free from your slavery and you leave Egypt. Now a lot of people leave Egypt that night. Over a million people leave and go out into the wilderness. All right, so far so good. You end up being trapped between the Red Sea and pursuing Egyptian armies who want you back. Now there's a big cloud between you and the Egyptians, so that's safe enough. But from a human point of view, you can't get out of this situation. But with God's help, he parts the Red Sea, you walk through it, and when you're all through, the Egyptians are allowed to go into the same path and of course the waters come back and drown them all. At long last you're safe, you're free of slavery, but you now have another problem. You're in the desert and there's over a million of you, there's no water and there's no food. Now, by this time you should know your God really well, that he can do anything, he can feed a million people without any trouble. But from a human point of view, this is a disastrous situation. You're going to die of starvation or thirst. So in what they should have done was go to Moses and say, look, we know our God can do anything. And we'd be most grateful if he would provide us with food and water. We know he can. Instead of that, they started grumbling and complaining and we're going to go back to the melons and the garlic and so on. And of course Jehovah gets really angry with them. If they'd just shown some faith, everything would have been all right. As it happens, Jehovah helps them anyway. And the next morning, the sun rises and the dew evaporates and there's this stuff that's left over on the ground, a little bit like this. I'm sorry, I don't know if you can see that or not. It's like coriander seed, only it's white. You can do all sorts with it. You can bake it, make pancakes out of it. You can boil it and make a porridge. It tastes like honey cakes, it's nice. And the Lord has provided water as well. So, there's what is the lesson there for us today? Our God can do anything. Now, there were a lot of other miracles attached to this manner. 
the Lord gave them several commandments. One, they weren't to leave any over till the next day. Well, of course, they did, some of them, and it developed worms. But at long last, a, a wonderful thing happened. At the end of the sixth day, God said to them, tomorrow is a Sabbath. At long last, they had a day of rest. Now, generally, each day, they were picking up roughly about this up to here, this much, about an omer. And each day, for each person, they would collect this amount. On the sixth day, they were to collect two of these per person. And when they kept it overnight, it didn't rot. So they developed um, a trust in their God. Well, they should have done anyway. And what was the whole point of this? Well, I'll read you from Deuteronomy 8. Sorry, I've got coriander seed everywhere. Deuteronomy 8, 2 and 3. Remember how Yahweh your God led you for 40 years in the wilderness to humble you, to test you, to know your inmost heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And of course they didn't, did they? He humbled you. He made you feel hunger. He fed you with manna, which neither you nor your fathers had known, to make you understand that man does not live on bread alone, but that man lives on everything that comes from the mouth of Yahweh. We need the scriptures. We cannot live without them, because without them we won't develop faith. So, the more we read the scriptures, the greater our faith will be. And also our experience, the way that God answers our prayers, it will give us great confidence that God will easily get us through these trials. We don't need to worry. He will provide for us, probably not luxuries, but we will get through. Our God will save us. Thank you so much for watching this morning and God bless you all.